This milky white sap is latex, and it feeds the world's appetite for natural rubber. Over 70% of the global supply goes into making tires for cars, trucks, and planes. But the explosion of rubber tree plantations here in Cambodia over the past few decades has devastated lives and displaced thousands of people. Sol Tong is one of them. Sol takes this path every day to reach his rice fields. He has to walk through a massive rubber plantation to get there. Around three and a half acres of land is all he has left to provide for his family. The government leased more than a third of the land he used to farm to a rubber producer. Saul was only able to secure a land title for his remaining rice fields. Every acre counts for Saul, who grows rice, cassava, and potatoes on his land. <laughs> he used to be able to forage for vegetables and hunt wild animals in surrounding forests to feed his family. But those were also uprooted. <laughs> Saul is part of the Kachok ethnic group. They're one of more than a dozen indigenous groups in northeastern Cambodia who have been losing land to a big Vietnamese rubber company called Huang An GLI, or Hegel. And it's been difficult for them to get it back. Because even though the Kachok and other groups have lived here for generations, many didn't have state-recognized ownership of their land. It wasn't until 2009 that the government created a legal process for indigenous communities to apply for collective land titles. The rush for rubber in Cambodia began when global prices for natural rubber peaked in 2011. Companies started looking for places to develop plantations in Southeast Asia, a region that produces most of the world's natural rubber. The Cambodian government saw an opportunity to cash in. By 2012, it had leased three quarters of the country's farmland to mostly foreign companies. Nearly half of that land was turned into rubber plantations. And the people who already occupied that land say they only found out when developers showed up to clear it. Rasham Lauren used to grow crops and feed dozens of chickens, pigs, and cows on 12 acres. But the government leased most of that land to Hegel. Now Rasham doesn't have enough land to grow crops, and he has just two cows left. Miền 
Despite the risk, Rasham wanted to take us to the other side of the fence, to a cluster of trees surrounded by Hegel farmland. This is what's left of a burial site that has been sacred to Rasham and his community for generations. Rasham and local NGOs say Hegel cleared the surrounding forest in 2011. It was only through community protest that they managed to save a fraction of the burial site. Rasham says the graves of his grandchildren were destroyed, and his son's gravesite happened to be spared. The fight to reclaim indigenous land still rages on. In 2014, 17 villages, including Rasham's, filed a complaint against the World Bank, which funded Hegel's growth. The World Bank says it funds projects that help reduce poverty in developing countries. But a 2015 report by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists found that the World Bank financed governments and companies accused of human rights violations, such as rape, murder, and torture. In 2019, the Cambodian government ruled that Hegel must return 1,800 acres to the indigenous communities in Ratnakiri province. That's less than 2% of all of Hegel's land leases. Still, Hegel initially refused to return it. Then in 2021, an auto company called Taco took over all of Hegel's land leases. Kia, BMW, Peugeot, and Mazda order cars and other auto parts from Taco. Insider repeatedly reached out to Hegel and these other companies. None of them responded. Hegel still recently cleared land they promised to return. Tapa Youth, a member of the Chirai ethnic group, took us to a place local indigenous communities refer to as a spirit mountain. They believe the spirits of their ancestors reside here. But in 2020, while many villagers were under COVID lockdown, Hegel mined part of this mountain, according to local media. This footage was filmed by locals who caught developers excavating with a backhoe. <laughs> Hegel didn't respond when we asked about the clearing of the Spirit Mountain and burial site. Demand for natural rubber is growing around the world. It's expected to jump nearly 30% in the next decade alone but most of the world still relies on Southeast Asia. Synthetic rubber has become a popular alternative, but it isn't strong enough to replace natural rubber in things like airplane and truck tires. The governor of Ratnakiri told Insider that Hegel agreed to return the 1,800 acres of land in January, but indigenous communities are still waiting. Meanwhile, they've been working with local NGOs to secure land titles for the few plots they have left. NGOs and indigenous people say the process is slow and titles only grant them a small portion of their traditional land. I 
As of 2021, less than 10% of the 455 indigenous communities in Cambodia have collective land titles. ຕາວາເລື່ອງໃດຄືປູ່ກົມຮຸນຕຶນປຽນຍົກນີ້ສອກສອກສາຍນະບ້ອງສອກສາຍ